95 of Scott's Works Translation. Come, let's sing joyful to the Lord. Let's shout happily to the rock of our salvation. Let's come into his presence with a song of thanksgiving. Let's shout happily to him with songs. The Lord is a great God. Hallelujah. Yes. And a great king above all gods. Hallelujah. Yes. In his hands are the deep places of the earth, the mountains, peaks are his. The sea is his. He made it. His hands formed the dry land. I love this next verse. Come, let's worship and bow down. Let's kneel in front of the Lord, our maker. Because he is our God. Yes. So you make it personal. He yes. is our God. Yes. Hallelujah. We are the people in his care. The flock that he leads. Yes. And, and you can just hear it crack. If only we would listen to him today. That's what God wants us to do. Is listen to what he's telling us. Right. How many times that would keep us out of trouble. Yeah. If we would listen to what God said. Yeah. God can tell you where to live at, where to work at, if you just listen to what he has to say. Right. Last Sunday, the missus and I, we was over in uh, Illinois uh, pulling a Valley High School band trailer, and we blew a tire on our trailer. And um, the way God worked all the circumstances out, because we ended up getting stranded on the highway. And that could be a dangerous situation, yeah. let me tell you, but there ain't much we can do. Yeah. And But God sent the right person to replace our tire. Because yeah. at first, I've, I've been in this business a long time, the tire was on the left side, but he took the jack on the right side. I'm thinking, I think we're missing something here. <laughs> you know? We're going to jack it up on the right side when the tire is on the left side. You know? And the Lord is like, let him do his job. So he was smart. I mean, I know, you know, God, God uses all different types of people and gives you all different talents. So what he was doing, he wasn't jacking up on the right side. He went underneath the trailer and jacked the whole back up mm -hmm. so that he wouldn't be on the traffic side. Mm -hmm. I thought that was brilliant. Mm -hmm. That was brilliant. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that's the way it's there, you know, using your air jack and, and a traffic's running yeah. 65, 70 miles an hour. He said, no, this is safe. Mm -hmm. This is safe. And I said, I got it. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. He gave wisdom. He says, and we, we got to talking afterwards. He says, you know what, Ken? I can't drive it, but I can fix it. So that's all right. I can't fix it, but I can drive it. <laughs> so, so it's all good. And, and I thought about that. I thought about how God used him. He had a smile on his face. He was doing his job. And we got the opportunity to go see the band. And this I went down over to Northern Illinois University. And we, we saw Valley March and the other bands. But you know the one thing I loved about watching them is precision. All the practice they put in. All the hours. But I always watch how they watch the conductor. You know, the band, they're up here and they're leading, and they're watching. And I, we was down about halfway to the field, and I could hear them kids counting off. I said, one, two, three, four. So we'd all be in sequence. Man, that's good, that precision. They, they, would, they cared about what the conductor, bandmaster, you know, he was, they were doing. They cared about it, you know? They, you know, the audience was out there, but they knew they needed to keep, look at the direction of what he wanted to do. Because this person had to go this place, this person had to blow the instrument, and, and when it all came together, it made a beautiful sound. Right. But that's really what God does. Yeah. He takes all of our different personalities and uses them. You got talents, I got talents, we all got talents to use for his glory. Yes. And that's what we want to never forget. Never forget where God brought you from. Right. Never forget the blessings that he's given you every single day, right. every hour. Sometimes I think that's the reason we get discouraged, is that we take our hand, our eyes off of God. Right. And we think, and I know I, I say some of the same things uh, over and over because they work. And, you know, and the thing is, if God delivered us from A at that time, what makes us possibly think he's not going to deliver us from right. B happens? Right. Yeah. What makes us possibly going to think that? That right. he's not going to be there with us at that time. He's right. always with us. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, when, when I came back in, we came back in the morning, and we had the delivery out right from some bit out the Valley Football Stadium. Well, we got to get their band trailer in there, 70 foot long, but my truck and trailer was 70 foot. And, and they were going to meet me out there about an hour, but actually, they, they came out there a couple hours before we got out there and said, Tim, we came ahead of you to keep the traffic out of the way. Because mm -hmm. I'm pulling a semi in there. You know, and I thought, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. They ran ahead. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's what God does. Yeah. God, you know, you, you read like a daily bread, different thing. I remember years ago I read it, and he said, don't worry about tomorrow because God's already there. Yeah. I thought, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. And they was already running ahead. And I'll tell you what, I got in that stadium. We didn't have any issues. And I thank God. And I, I want to end with this part. And this is uh, Romans um, 8. I'm going to read 38 to the end of the chapter. Now, this is out of Amplified Version. Because I love the way Paul, Paul went through a lot of things. He didn't start out his career very well. You know, he's out there persecuting Christians. But you know what happened? When God says it's enough, it's enough. Yeah. You know? Because Paul thought he was persecuting Christians. He didn't realize he was persecuting Jesus Christ. You're the one. You're the one attacking me. You think you're attacking them. God knocked him off the horse. You know, knocked him off. And, and he went blind and said, you know, hey, hey, what, you know, Paul didn't know what was going on. But he cried out and looked at Paul's life. You know, and one thing that's interesting, when he went from Saul, when he was Saul of Tarsus, he went to Paul. The one thing God didn't take away from, from when he made him Paul, you know what he didn't take away? His enthusiasm. You know, that fire burning. It was just misdirected. Yeah. Now he used it for the church instead of against the church. Because right. he's kept, Paul still had that fire. Yeah. He still, now he stood for Christ. Because Paul's main thing, he says, oh, to know him. Oh, to know him. Yeah. And look at his desire. Paul wanted to see everybody's life change. Right. And for him to go from Saul of Tarsus to Paul, where it became one of the, the greatest writers of the New Testament, and for him to write this down, I love this. For I am persuaded. I love that. Yes. See, when you're persuaded, it's like it's like Daniel in the Old Testament. The Bible said Daniel purposed in his heart yes. not to follow himself for the king's meat. He purposed. He had a purpose. And that's what we got to realize. we got to choose if we're going to serve God or not going to serve him. That's what it's about. And Paul makes a declaration. I like, like those purpose statements. I am persuaded. Yes. I am persuaded. I know. I know. Yes. For I am persuaded beyond doubt. I love that. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending, or threatened of things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. In all creation. Just think about that. In all creation. So separate us from the love of God, right. which is in Christ Jesus our right. love. <laughs> Somehow, and you know, I love him because he's crazy, but he knows what's going to happen. Um, to see if she can come for the wedding, because she's handicapped. Yeah. But if, <coughs> if anyone can do it other than God, it's him with his creativity. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, we'll definitely pray. And, and <coughs> that's what good, because the Bible says. Why would you ask me that? Hey, we 
he's singing song in the room, got the whole world in hand. Right. He's still got the whole world in hand. Yeah. He's got the universe in hand. And God ain't planning on dropping it. Yeah. That's right. When he tells that star to stay there, you're going to stay there until I tell you otherwise. You know, and, and that's the thing. We, we look at, you know, we, we often look to Scripture, Romans 8, 28. And that's what we always got to look at that. I love, I love that verse. And we claim it a lot. Romans 8, 28, we are sure and know that God being part in the labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his design yes. and purpose. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So all those things, sometimes we think that, boy, this looks bad. God's still working it for good. Yes. God still loves you that much. Yes. You know, Jeremiah says, I love you with an everlasting love. Yes. What does that mean? Everlasting never ends. Yes. Right? It never ends. Yes. God's going to never stop loving you. Right. I mean, that's sometimes, you know, people, sometimes can be fickle. One day they love you, and the next day they don't want nothing to do with you. You know, you can say the wrong word one time, and they're, you know, they don't want nothing to do. But I'm glad God's bigger than that. Yeah. You know? You know, God's long suffering. Right. I mean, just think if, if every time I remember, and I know I shared this before, but there's times I didn't didn't go to church as often, you know, and you read the set home, read your funny papers instead of reading the Bible. You know, God says, well, Tim, I don't know, I think I'm done with you. you you'd rather read Al Cap, you know, or read Blondie or something like that, <laughs> that to read my word. But God knew down the line, I'm going to be patient. Yeah. That's what God wants us to be with one another, be patient. Right. You know, if somebody's not going to church the way they should or your kids aren't where they should be, you pray yes. for them. Yes. That's what you do. Amen. Pray that God can turn around. Be surprised yes. who gets turned around. Right. Be surprised who, who can just say something and turn around. I remember being in a hotel and it's, it wasn't a very good time in my life and this young man, he went by me and this just, just turned my life around. I, you know, we kind of, sometimes you, you almost, I always like to say hi to people if they're walking right beside you. And I said, how you doing, young man? You know what he said? I'm blessed. That's what he said. Boy, wow. He, he was probably about 12 years old. I'm blessed. That came out of his mouth. Yeah. He's very respectful. Wow, I'm blessed. And I thought, wow, I'm blessed too. Yeah. What am I doing? I need, I need to realize I'm blessed. Yeah. And it just it just came out of that. Just yeah. came, I'm blessed. That's what I thought. Man, this young man has a right perspective right. of God. He realized he's blessed. Yeah. And that's what we got to look at. Our lives are blessed. Yeah. I'm telling you what. I mean, if you think, if you got clothes and food and, and, and all that stuff, there's some don't, and we're going to pray for the hurricane victims, you know, that, that our lives got changed and wiped out. I mean, we're, we're blessed, you think about it. Yeah. You know, sometimes when, they, when they'll show, when they show the, the victims and sometimes a house might be left or sometimes if they have it all, have lost everything, you know what, they, they realize that they have their family. Some of them, you ought to hear them sometimes, well, I got my family. You know, you can rebuild a house, you can do all that. Yeah. And sometimes when you have your family, right. so everybody got out. Right. Everybody got out. We got to a shelter. We may not have all the things we need, but we have each other. Right. And most important, we have God. We have it all. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Someone else. Someone else. Yes. Um, it's funny that it's not funny, but it's just the Lord. Are you talking about love this morning? Because I was getting ready.
because they spent three and a half years with them. They come in the garden and they took and they fled doesn't mean walk away. They took off running. Yeah. Right? And the only one that turned around was Peter. But you know, he had his issues, you know, and, and he was up warning himself by the fire. And, well, hey, you sound like no, 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 you got me wrong. You know, and, and he denied, he denied Jesus. Right. He denied him. I mean, when he starts cussing, I mean it wasn't very good. Mm-hmm. You know? You know, you sound like him. You you gotta be one of you to sound like him. No, I don't even know him. Now how sad is that? Right. I don't you know, that's out of my life because he was with him for three and a half. I don't even know him. Right. And I gotta share this. But I got to share this. When, when that scripture came around, one day it became real to me. My mom was put in a nursing home. And we had went down there to see her because some of my, they was in Missouri and we was up now. And I went down there and uh, because some of my nieces had called and said, you better go check on Granny. She don't sound like herself, you know. There's something wrong. They had to put her on medication. And I went down there and she was in, a, uh, they was doing some rehabilitation work and she was doing some exercises. But she looked at me like she didn't know who I was. You know, and she just kind of stared at me and I was looking at something wrong. So then the, the lady was working with her and said, well, I'm about done. We'll take her to a room. And we was, uh, it was about lunchtime. We take her to a room. And she looks at me and she had no clue who I was. The, I'm telling you what, that hurt. I, I'm, tell, I'm the youngest and, and, and I was really close to mom and, and, and the nurse said, you know, do you know who this is? And she just looked like, well, that's your son, Tim. Then her face lit up. I couldn't take it, folks. Like yeah. mm-hmm. I, I had to leave the room. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't big enough not to cry. <laughs> I went out there and I, I, I just thought, Mom, how can you not know me? I'm, I'm your youngest son. I'm the last one. How could you not know me? And I mean that really. And she, she later came back. I'm telling you, to you know, at the, at, the, at the time I'd been probably 50, 50 years old, but at, but for her just to not have no clue who I was, and when that when I hear Peter, I just like, oh, I just like yeah. Peter, you know, I just think, how can you not know me, Peter? You spent two and a half years with me. I walked with you, prayed with you, and I was there with you. Then how can you not know? Me? But then when everything. But I, I, I just think about that. That when after Jesus been resurrected, and the next time that you see, and he said, when he got resurrected, he said, when you, when you see Peter, tell him, I'm resurrected, but make sure you tell Peter <laughs> that because everything I said come true. And then when they talk, it's interesting to know that Jesus never brought it up. Yeah, yeah interesting. He didn't bring it up to any of them that they fled. He didn't say, you guys, I really don't appreciate that. He never said that. What he said, you know, I love it. When, when Peter, Jesus was talking, do you love me? That's what he's talking about, love. Yeah. He didn't say, Peter, you know what? That wasn't very good. No, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Yeah. Do you love me? Right. If you love me, you're going to go out and you're going to tell the yeah. others how much yes. you love them, right. how much I love them. That's what you're going to do. You know, yeah. do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know yeah. I love you. And look at Peter's life, especially after the Holy Ghost came. Yeah. Boy, I mean, he's a fireball. Right. But but he but he had to learn some things. Peter had to learn some yeah. things. And I, and I think one thing about it is never forget, folks, how much Jesus loves you. Yeah. Never ever forget that. Right. If you deny that something goes wrong, always remember this: which way did Jesus die? He died like this. Yeah. You ever notice that? He died like this. This was probably because his arms are wide open for us. Yeah. That's the way he died. Yes. He died for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, someone else. Amen. Yes. Um, I have a couple testimonies. Um, my brother was in that hurricane. So oh. he lives probably 40 miles offshore inland. Mm-hmm. And that's where the worst of it was. The shore didn't get as uh, bad of wind and things as the in- inland did. But he said, he goes, we got a lot of rain for a while. So he was enduring it for like five hours, and he lives in a trailer. He goes, that back wind, when the wind shifted, was the worst. He said, my trailer started, you know. He said, I walked from one end to the other praying. And he said that nothing, he didn't have any damage after it was all said and done. The pastor down there and his wife had four big trailers.
trees fall on the home, but they did not penetrate the home. So I told him, I said, you know, God is with us. When we cry out to him, he is there for you. You just got to keep your mind and your eyes focused on him instead of the storm going on around you. Um, and then a couple weeks ago, I was sitting at my, at my desk, and I lost vision in my right eye. And I thought, for like 15 minutes, I sat there, and I was trying to write an email, and I couldn't even think on how to spell we, like W-E. So it was like my mind went, what is going on? So I knew it was an attack of the enemy. This stuff just doesn't happen. Um, so I went to the bathroom, and I sat in there, and I told God, I said, I am not leaving this bathroom until you heal my body. I have to go back out and work. I have to deal with people. I have to drive home, and I cannot see out of this right eye. And in 20 minutes, I stayed in that restroom, and he healed my body. Hallelujah. He healed it. So I'm just saying, when we cry out to him and believe his word and his truth, we are coming into times where we need him. Nothing else is going to work. We need him. So I'm just trying to encourage when you cry out, he does answer you. So just stay focused on him and what his truth is and not what's going on around. So Amen. Thank you. So yesterday, um, after working at farmers markets, Mike said, meet me at the church at three o'clock and we'll begin your guitar lesson.
to the youth, to our new, our next generation. And you need to be able to do what you're doing because when I was listening to you, I could feel how much God loved me. Mm-hmm. And our youth have no idea how much God loves them mm-hmm. and how important they are to him. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I said, it's so important that you can get out and do this because we need to reconcile their hearts right. to him. Right. And one of the, and I'm just sitting there bawling, giving them this word, which it was, it was just crazy. And one of the singers, she just, she just couldn't take it. And she just was just bawling and crying. And, and I said, I don't know why I was here other than the fact that, you know, I was supposed to learn how to play the guitar, but I ended up, <laughs> you know, that right. was, that was the important part. Right. That was the important part. And. When I was telling my husband Eric about it later, I said, it's crazy. I said, it was just crazy because as I was sitting back there listening and tears were just streaming down my face because I could feel love, because I could feel that importance, because I felt that on my heart. I said, it literally felt like somebody was standing over my head and just pouring buckets of the Holy Spirit on top of me. And I said it was an amazing thing, and it totally transformed my heart. So, Thank you, Jesus. Um, you know, I'm just really praying for these women that they can get out there and they can do what God <coughs> created them right. to do. Right. Yes. Oh, good. studying, I mean, I'll get on a certain verse sometimes, and God will keep me there, keep me there, keep me there for a long time, and where he's had me at lately is in 2 Corinthians 5, and towards the end, it's really, it's really interesting, because uh, what they're saying is that he, is Paul is like begging people, he says, God begs you, begs you to be reconciled to, to him through Jesus. And so the interesting thing is, is that he's talking to Christians, he's talking to church, he's not talking to somebody who's not saved. So he's not asking to say the John 3, 16 prayer. He's saying in your heart, you need to be reconciled to the Father. And that's the whole reason that Jesus came. Yes. Was so that God could reconcile us back yes. to him, back to his heart, so he could fill his love inside yes. of our hearts. Yes. And as we walk in the flesh, you know, as we, as we, you know, it's not a done deal. You know, I think it's religion. You know, the church has really shortchanged us over the years. And the reason is because they say You said the prayer, you're in, brother, you're in. Now just confess these scriptures and you're in. But it's not because it's a journey. Just like Israel had to take this journey through the wilderness. Like Jesus went out and took this journey in the wilderness. You know, the Holy Spirit came upon him and he was empowered. And that's what we're supposed to do. You know, he's made that path to the Father. Now we need to be reconciled. And the reason is that we can become creatures of love. So that we can love and show the younger generation. Show the world. Who he is through us becoming right. a living epistle. Yes. But it's, I, I mean, I've been sitting in church here the last couple of weeks and it's almost like a solemn of sadness is over me. And, and really, normally I can stand up and if anybody listens to me, I'll talk until you want to leave because God just puts his stuff inside me. And I know, Tim, I mean, Tim, you're like that too, right? You can just, you start your man, you're like the Energizer Bunny. You can yeah. talk. But it's like, I think God's just calling people. It's like, just be reconciled. You know, he's calling, he's calling, he's calling. And he doesn't want us to ignore it and just go on. You know, he wants us to be reconciled to him. Yes. He wants to pull those stumbling yes. blocks out of our, uh, our heart, out of our soil. Yes. You know, so the seed that springs up so quickly can take root and grow and bear fruit. Yes. You know, it's all about fruit. You can have a hundred scriptures and it can be in your head. But right. if it's not fruit, right. it doesn't do anybody any good. Because right. all of a sudden all you are is another hypocrite telling what's wrong with them. Right. You know, to the average unsaved person. Right. You know? But when that fruit's there, and like Alvin said one day, that essence, you know, that aroma, that goodness, that mercy yeah. just comes on people when they're expecting judgment, condemnation, you know, right. and they're just another failure. Because everybody knows there's a, they're a failure. Yeah. I mean, you just go out in the world, and all you got to do is look at someone. Yeah. And, you know, conviction will come on. Because, like, man, I, you know, I feel condemned to be a failure. You yeah. know, when you hear a preacher say anything. But what they need is that Jesus never did that. Right, exactly. You know, he was that bomb of Gilead. Yes. Uh, you know, here's that fragrance.
fragrance that just, you know, put the love of God inside of them. That's what we need to be doing. We're supposed to be converted, transformed, become a representation, representation, a living epistle. We're supposed to walk like Jesus walked. It says Amen. we can do it in the New Testament. Amen. It doesn't mean yes. that we're God, but his love is connected yes. to us and flows out. Yes. Amen. And so that's why we've got to take that journey, yes. people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
here a year ago. And uh, I had just gotten out of the hospital after having brain surgery. I had been having seizures. I could have eight to 10 of them a day. And after having eight of them seconded without coming out of the first one, they decided that I needed to go to Iowa City. And I saw doctors there. And at the time, I was on 4,500 milligrams of medications to try to control them, and it wasn't working. After my uh, surgery and everything, six weeks in the hospital, if not longer, I finally got to come home. Well, today, I can say that since surgery, I have not had any seizures. You know, in our prayers, my daughter sat beside me. Her church was there with me. And she prayed with me every day. You know, I have a 22-year-old daughter that was my encourager for over a year, constantly saying, you know, God is with us. He always has been and always will be. And every morning, as soon as I'd wake up, she'd pray with me. And God's got his hands. He's got his hands around these surgeons. God is in that surgery room with you. And by January, right now,
life. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. At all times. Good times, bad times, no matter what. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise, not complaint. Hallelujah. Because it's time to stop complaining and start proclaiming how good God is. Because you are a mighty God, our Savior. Yes, Wonderful Savior. Yes, Wonderful Father. Holy Father. The righteous yes, one. Jesus. Father God, we thank you that we can come in your house. We thank you, Lord, and we ask you to put your arms around each and every one of us today. Let us never forget how good you are. We want to give you the praise and the glory yes, in your wonderful holy name. Yes, amen yes, and amen. Lord.
give out Bibles, as I said, to the high school and, uh, I mean, to the colleges. Uh, they received one of these testaments. Uh, we were at Weeks Middle School. And in 15 minutes, we gave out over 400 of these little testaments. And we're still going to be giving out Bibles at uh, the middle schools, not only this fall, but also next spring. Uh, we are from the east side, but we also help take care of the south side. And so we have a chance to give out Bibles in many of those different schools. We have a constitutional right to stand on the sidewalk as the students leave the building. But I want to share with you something that you uh, probably haven't heard a lot about. The Gideon Ministry actually, uh, last year, uh, gave out a million Bibles every four days. Every four days. So when I mention these Bibles, that's just a drop in the bucket compared to how many we distribute uh, around the world. Uh, we gave out 91 million Bibles last year. Uh, we have... We have the Bible in uh, 200 languages, and if you were to take your phone out, and you can do this because it's free, and you went to the Gideon website, you can download their languages, 1,133 different languages. So we have that available for people in a lot of the countries. Like I said, we have 200. We have uh, the Bible in 99 languages, but you can download over a thousand of those. So we can make that available to people around the world. And that's really what we are in the ministry for, is to make those available, because we know that Isaiah 55, verse 11, so shall my word go forth, it shall not return void. But it shall prosper in the things for which I sent it. And that's why we do it, because we know that God's word does not return void. Well, a year ago, just a little over a year ago, in August, I had the opportunity to go to Argentina. And while I was there, we were able to go and distribute Bibles. I met with ten other, or actually nine other men. We go there at our own expense, and we were there for ten days. I spoke at four different churches, and then we went during the week and gave out 182,000 Bibles in that ten days. We joined with the local Gideons, and we would go out in the morning, and we would go to, well, actually went three days in a row to, uh, we were in Cordova, and we gave out Bibles at the college there. It's 100,000 students, and so that was one of the areas we gave out Bibles. And then we went to the, to the middle schools. I actually went to a police station and a hospital, and we had the opportunity to go to a jail, and give out Bibles there. And I shared with them, uh, I had the opportunity to speak at the prison. Now we have translators because most of what they speak down there was Spanish, and that was most of what we gave out the Bibles in. But I told them, I said, when I had that opportunity to speak there, I said, you know, uh, everyone in this room, I'm gonna include you, everyone in this room here is gonna die. But that's the bad news. But the good news is we're all going to go to heaven. But when we get up there, there's a great big door there. But the door's closed. And you can't get in. But you know what? When you take one of these and read about Jesus and accept him as your Savior, you have the key to open the door. And that's what it's all about. And so we had an opportunity to give out Bibles there in that prison. And actually, they call them pods, and we had an opportunity to go to two different pods and give out Bibles, and then they were going to go back later and after we had left and go to the other three pods and give out Bibles. But that's really the key. Jesus is the key to open that door. And sadly to say, some people don't have that key. But we know that as we give them out, God can change lives and change hearts. That's what the ministry does. It's uh, interesting uh, because when we were there, there were several things that happened. Uh, we went to Chile, and we were there. Uh, Brad and I got there a day early, and we stayed in Chile before we went on down to Argentina. And so we were there for uh, 
that night and had a chance to see the city. We went down then to Argentina. And when we left, we had to fly back through uh, Chile. And when we got back, two weeks later, they had an 8.4 earthquake in Chile. So we just missed that by two weeks. So you don't think prayer makes a difference? One of the teams had an opportunity to go out uh, to a base where there was a military base. They went and parked their car, went in and talked to them, and they said, well, you can come back in an hour, and we will then let you give out 5,000 Bibles to the men in the, the military and women. So they left. When they came back, where they were parked, there was another car there. But there was also a tree that had fell on that car while they were gone. So if they had a stayed, had stayed there, there's an opportunity that they may have been killed. So again, prayer changes things. And this ministry is built on prayer. And I say that because they were, they were praying for our team while we were gone. And we pray for all of the teams as they have an opportunity to go to other countries. We have a prayer breakfast every Saturday morning. We not only pray for the ministry, we pray for the churches. We pray for all of the churches on the 19th of each month. But our camp prays for three different churches each week. And so every once in a while, Pastor Nathan receives a letter, and we have signed that saying that we have prayed for him and your congregation. We believe in prayer, and we believe that God can use that. You know, God, as you already heard in those testimonies this morning, Amen. how God can use prayer to change things. Yes. So we know that God uh, uses those testaments to change lives. And actually, uh, you have a rack back there in your church, and I've shared this before. There's different cards. Like this one here says, thinking of you, where you can give a Bible if you want or more and send that card to that individual and you send the check to the Gideons. And then those Bibles are placed in hotels where they have a chance to reach 2,300 people over a six and a half year life expectancy. Many times those Bibles are in there much longer than that six and a half years. Even when we take them out, we then give them or change the cover uh, that's because, believe it or not, you take this cover, and in the prisons, they'll take the cover off, and they'll use it for a weapon. I don't know how they do that, but, you know, they're very creative in the prisons. Yeah. We now have a Bible that we can buy, and we give, uh, it's a softbound cover like this one. I should have brought one with me today, but uh, that way we can give them right to those people in the prisons. And uh, we have Jerry Van Cleve. He is the chaplain at the Polk County Jail. We're taking between 100 or 75 and 100 Old <coughs> Testaments to him every month. And he then makes sure that the inmates have one if they would like one. And I, he, what he tells, because I've heard him talk a couple different times, it's interesting, when they get out of prison, they'll ask, uh, then would you like a, a new Bible? They said, no, we want to keep the one that we received while we were in prison. Mm -hmm. And so it shows that they're not only reading them, but you know what, they're a captive audience. They got all day to read those Bibles. Yes. And so a lot of people are accepting the Lord through his ministry. Actually, it's through the Lord's ministry. Yes, thank you, Jesus. But I want to share with you, uh, there's also one here that says, in recognition of your achievement, uh, we're sending our camp is sending these to pastors. This happens to be October, Pastor Appreciation Month, so he's going to receive a, a card, and we've signed it inside and said we're given a Bible in honor of your service to the Lord in this church. And if you'd like to do that, you can. You can do it for 25th anniversaries, 50th birthdays, a promotion. Somebody maybe. Uh, Retired. There's all kinds of opportunities to use that type of card. And this one here, of course, is when it's in memory. And if somebody passes away, you can give one, two, three, or whatever number of Bibles you'd like. And those Bibles uh, that are given 
through this program are placed in the hotels and have those opportunities to reach people. I can share with you one last thing, and that is uh, when you give through this card program, when you give through your church, 100%, not 75, not 80%, 100% of what you give goes for Bibles. If you have a telemarketer call you, ask them how much of what they're asking you to give out of $10 would go for what they're calling you for. Uh, I can guarantee it, it's not 100%. In some cases, uh, you're lucky if it's 50%. So when I ask you to give to this ministry, I'm asking you uh, and, and telling you 100% goes for Bible. Amen. And just to show you how that can change a life, and it can change more than one life, because in many cases, a family may get saved through that testament, not just one Bible, but the whole family may. Right. And one of my favorite testimonies that I like to share is about uh, Jose. I don't remember if I shared this one with you. I just like it because of how it affects and changes lives. Uh, Jose uh, actually was always getting in trouble. And in this particular time, he broke into a girl's dormitory. And while he's there, he was trying to steal some things. And the girls came back and caught him while he was in there. And so they started throwing things at him, and one of the girls had received a little orange testament. She threw that at him. Well, he grabbed that when he was running out the door along with a few other things. Later on, he started to read that little testament, and he found out that Jesus loved him, and he gave his life to the Lord. As a matter of fact, there's a place in the back of each of these little testaments. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Also, that we are all sinners and that we can all be saved now. And he said that sinner's prayer and he gave his life to Jesus. Well, he went on to go and become a pastor. And he became a pastor of one of the churches in that local area. He also married a girl from that church. It just so happened by accident that was the same girl that threw the Bible at him. <laughs> know that things don't happen by accident, that God uses, you know, all types of opportunities. Uh, as a matter of fact, I just heard a, another testimony, which I hadn't heard before. Uh, a guy went over into the mission field, went over into Africa, and while he was there, there was a witch doctor in the town. And so people didn't want to come to church because they believed in the witch doctor. Well, on one day, it was just raining hard, and the water was coming in to where he was staying, and so he opened the door and was sweeping the water out. A dog ran in and grabbed his Bible and took off with the Bible. And he didn't know where the dog went with the Bible. Two weeks later, the witch doctor knocks on his door. The witch doctor had his Bible. He said, a, a, a dog ran into my place and dropped that Bible and left. And the witch doctor read that and got saved. Wow. God works in mysterious ways, believe me. And he's not done working yet. He's still in control. God is good all the time. So anyway, I wanted to share this with you about the ministry. We have a goal that we call it 2020. And we have been praying for over five years on this goal of 2020. And the goal is to give out 120,000 Bibles by the year 2020. Well, we're at 91 million, and so we're, we're on our way, and we're not giving up yet. We have 260 or 270,000 men and women who volunteer their time to distribute Bibles throughout the world. And, you know, it says in, Act, or in, yeah, in Acts 1.8, when power comes upon you, you will be my witnesses. Yes. Not only in Jeru Jeru <coughs> Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, but to the uttermost parts of the earth. And I like what you kind of mentioned this morning. I believe time is getting short, and so we have a lot of work left to do. Uh, 
there's 7 billion people almost in the world today, and so we're still trying to reach all of those people. And God died not only for one, so it's just me, he died for all of us. And so we still have a lot of work to do. Thank you for letting me share with you, and God bless you. Appreciate you, Board of Gideons, and thank Mr. Tosin for joining us today. And we're going to continue to pray because, you know, just it, it can change a life. I mean, one life. I mean, that, that makes all the difference, you know. And uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and stand. And as we do a tradition, our church is going to speak the word. And uh, <coughs> just a reminder on the cell phone.
wants us all to live in the fullness of his glory. I don't care where you come from. I don't care your background. He hears about you. He hears about you. So if you have a need this morning, stand out in the aisle. Come out in the aisle. Take that step of faith. And someone will come and release the kingdom upon you. Any needs right now in the name of Jesus. Don't be intimidated. I don't care if you're young or if you're old. Come on now, church.
chosen our hearts, the heart of man, as your dwelling place. Oh, the mystery of your great love, Lord. Let it be revealed in us. That the holy God has declared us righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ, declared holy and righteous and acceptable. Oh, Lord, that you would want us you do and we are so thankful we are thankful that you have redeemed us that you have resurrected us to life eternal to be one with you Lord help us to be salt and light to this world help us to shed grace wherever we go to share the message the hope that is in us that the world might know the depth, the height, the breadth of your great love shed abroad in the hearts of man. Jesus, we thank you for our pastor, Nathan, his wife, Sally. We thank you for the generation you're rising up in the youth. And we thank you as we gather here today for your presence in our midst. Because you protect him. You won't let any bad come upon him. And the Lord says, all right, test him. But you can't hurt him. So he, so Satan went. And he had free reign in Job's life. And he took all that Job had. He took his children. He took his livelihood. He took his crops, his, his animals, his livestock. But he wouldn't curse God. He wouldn't turn his back on the Lord. He said, you know what? The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And Satan still wasn't satisfied. So he said, see, God comes back, chapter 2. Comes back to God, and Satan's sneaking in to, to rat out somebody to stir up some trouble. And the Lord says, see, even when you took all the stuff away, Job still loves me. He still loves righteousness and hates sin. And Satan, not satisfied, says, well, he's in perfect health. You, deal, you, 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 you mess with a man's health, and he, he won't worship anyone. He won't love you anymore. And God said, yes, he will. You can, you, can, you can do whatever you want with his health, but you can't kill him. So Satan did, didn't he? He, it was described as having pus-filled wounds all over his body. He had to use a broken pot to scrape off all the pus. That's deplorable. That's hurting. And it got to Job. He was miserable. He couldn't stand to be in his own skin. And he started to question. And then his buddies came over, right? Three of his friends came over. Great buddies. Encouragers, right? Not so much. And they and, and so they sat down. And I'm going to just read a couple of verses. So his buddies show up, three of them, from afar off, because they heard, oh, man, righteous Job. 
Now, were they coming to encourage him? Were they coming to investigate? Oh, I, I knew, I knew he's gonna fall off his high horse. That Job, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect, right? Now, were they coming? What were their hearts? I don't know, but they came. And so they sat down with Job upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spoke a word unto him, for they saw that his grief was very great. That sounds awesome. Have friends come and just sit with you and wait with you and just be there with you. But then Job started, and he started as, woe is me. Woe is me. Chapter 3, verse 1 starts, After this day, Job opened his mouth and cursed his day. And then we go on from chapter 3. I believe we go all the way back to, where are we at? Chapter, <laughs> chapter 37. Where we're, woe is me. The friends give us, well, you know, Job, if you weren't a sinner, you know, God only punishes the sinners, you know. And, and how many of us have had things happen in our lives where we go, God, did I, did I do something wrong? Right. Are you mad at me? Right. Did, I don't deserve this. Did Job deserve any of the trials that came upon him? No. And I kept praying, well, Lord, what's the message? He goes, that's just it. We don't deserve the things that happen to us sometimes. There is no reason. Right. It's not God behind it. It's not Satan behind it. Sometimes things just happen. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. He goes, you're right, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense. Bad things sometimes happen because we live in this fallen world, and we live in these bodies of flesh. We don't have our, our resurrected bodies yet, right? So we're stuck in these bodies that want the knowledge of good and evil instead of life. And sometimes it doesn't make any sense. But what Job did is he looked around to his buddies who were there with him, and he forgot to cry out to God. He forgot to look up. He forgot to look from the place where his help comes. And then a fourth friend came, and it, it hurt me. It just got worse. And so finally, in verse 38, 33 chapters of woe is me, one friend saying, well, if you did this, you wouldn't have done that. Job responds back and forth, back and forth, parables, all this stuff. The Lord speaks. <clears throat> then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. You ever felt like you're in a whirlwind? And said, Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now your loins like a man, and I will demand of you, and you declare to me. Well, I don't know if anybody felt a little bit of a, you know, put your big girl pants on and man up. That's yeah. kind of what I heard the Lord saying. He goes, and then we're going to talk. You're going to talk to me. You're going to declare to me. You're going to get up. Yep. You're going to put on your big boy pants, and you're going to talk to me. Right. And then we'll see what happens. And the Lord tells him, the Lord tells him, the Lord tells him some more, <laughs> and the Lord tells him some more. And then we get to where Job has a light bulb moment. And uh, in, ver in chapter 42, then Job said to the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no thought or purpose of yours can be restrained or thwarted. You said to me, who is this that darkness and obscures counsel by words without knowledge? Therefore, I now see, I have rashly uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. I had virtually said to you what you have said to me. Here, I beseech you, and I will speak. I will demand of you, and you declare to me. I heard of you only by the hearing of the ear, but now with my spiritual eye sees you. Sometimes, as I've said a million times, things are not as they appear. We look with our eyes, but we don't open our spiritual eyes. Right. Things are never as they appear. Right. And as soon as Job stopped, turned away, I don't, there's no more mention of his friends. There's no more mention of anybody but him and God. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly he's restored. Mm -hmm. And you know what he did? He prayed for those friends. Job prayed for those friends, and the people who came when he was at his lowest point in, the, in his life and just kind of buried him deeper. But he prayed for them. And God blessed him and multiplied him and gave him more than he had to begin with. Right. Now, I can't help but think the book of Job didn't have to be 42 books long. It didn't have to be 42 chapters. It could have been four. <laughs> I mean, really, it was one, two, three, and it could have been four and done. But it was 42 chapters. Right. And so I believe Jesus came and said, let me show you how this is done. Mm -hmm. And Jesus came, and he went into the wilderness. In Matthew chapter 4... Then was Jesus led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. 
And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made to bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and sitteth, and sitteth him on a pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. But Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again, the devil taketh him into an exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. And he saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. And then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So we went from 42 books to 11 verses. Mm -hmm. Now we have a choice, because Satan's going to come, and the tempter's going to come. The Bible tells us, do not be dismayed by the fiery trials that beset us. So things come. Our pastor hurts his back. His wife it now has to have back surgery. No, she doesn't. She doesn't have to have back surgery. They will stand upright yes. physically, spiritually, and always. We don't have to just sit back. Because you know what? Jesus was tempted, and he finished it. So we don't have to be tempted anymore. We don't have to be. Job didn't get it. Job, he didn't get it. He tried. He was the, he was the best God had in the Old Testament. But then God said, you know what? I'm going to show you how it's done. I'm going to come, yeah. and we're going to, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, it is written. Yes. This word doesn't have to be memorized, but it does have to be written in our hearts. Yeah. We don't have to know the verse and the scripture. Michael gives me a hard time saying Google. I'm like, I know the scripture. I just don't know the verse and the chapter. I Google it. Yeah, Google's, Google's my best friend. Yeah. Saves me a lot of time. It used to be all the, oh, Bible studies used to be like 12 books in a table, right? Because you had the, the, the concordance and the... Yeah. On, on all the topical yeah. Bibles and all, it was, oh, so Google, yeah, sign yeah. me up, saves me a bunch of time. Yeah. But it's the word. It's the word. That's yes. what makes the difference. So we have a choice when Satan comes, and and it, the testimonies were just all about this, you know. Um, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Yeah. And when someone said that, I don't know if I have any Game of Thrones fans in here, but uh, in Game of Thrones, <laughs> um, <laughs> Arya, right, she's going to this place where they're training her to be, you know, whatever, the multi face god, whatever, um, and they teach her to let go of her own identity and to become nobody, right? That's the whole goal is, uh, is um, how did she say it? A girl is no one. Who are you? And they whack her with a cane. A girl is no one. Whack her. Don't believe you. And that's her, the whole point of her training is to lose her identity and to become no one. So that she can become everyone. Yeah. Well, it's kind of the same thing. Not really. Sorry, Lord, for the Game of Thrones reference. But <laughs> we is no longer I. Yeah, somebody knows. Roberto knows. He watches Game of Thrones. <laughs> it's no longer I who live, but Christ in me. That's exactly right. There Suzanne is. who? Yeah, Satan exactly. comes to rebuff me, to rebuke my body? Right. Jesus Christ died yes. and rose again. Yes. Yes. He died a yes. death. Yes. That no one else will ever die again. Right. And and we're worried about what? Exactly. And we're worried about what? Right now. Uh, do we do we and, and I'm telling you, our friends, <coughs> God bless them, they come to help us to pray, to commiserate. Yeah. We need to just stop yes. and speak to the thing. Yes. To speak to the mountain. The Lord right. said, We will speak to the mountains and they shall be removed. Yes. Not to pray about moving the mountains. Yes. Not to pray about the mountain being in the yes. west. No. To speak to the mountains and they shall be removed. Yes. Come on. And so, uh, let's see where we go next. In 2 Corinthians, oh, I already did that one. Yep, got that one. Okay, so, okay, so, so this morning, this morning, I've been praying a lot since last night because I wasn't sure what the Lord wanted to say this morning. And this morning I woke up and I, kept, and I, I heard the song Amazing Grace. Amazing grace, my yes. singer, how sweet the sound. Yes. And I thought, I never noticed that before. How sweet the sound. sound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How sweet the sound. Yes. I have never thought of grace as a sound. Yeah. What does grace sound like? 
Oh, I'm sure it's sweet. I know it's sweet. I know it tastes sweet. Yes. It tastes good. It feels good. Yes. It, what, is it, what does it sound like? Does it sound like chains falling off? Yeah. Does it sound like that door being unlocked? Yes. Does it sound like the feet of the, of the prodigal son's father yes. running out to embrace his son who found his way home? Yes. Grace sounds like you are my beloved yes. child in yes. whom I am yes. well pleased. Oh. Grace sounds like you are accepted in the beloved. Yes. Ooh, yes. feels good. Yes. Grace sounds amazing. Yes. Grace sounds like a mighty rushing wind yes. when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Grace can sound like nothing at all when all the angels of heaven are silent waiting mm -hmm. for one person to say yes Lord. Yeah. yes Lord Jesus I believe in you and then the chorus of applause and the yes. rejoicing that happens yes. when one person yes. when one person says yes to the Lord First yes. Peter chapter 4 verses 12 through 13 oh that's the fiery trial we already did that one I'm going to go back to 2 Corinthians then Second Corinthians 12, verse 7 through 10. I won't I'll remember what's in my notes. Peter. Yeah, Peter, right? Peter um, <clears throat> doesn't know any, whether he's in his body or whether he's out of his body. He saw this heaven. He saw the third heaven. Mm -hmm. I want to see the third heaven. But Peter got to see, or Paul, excuse me, Paul got to see it. And he said that because he had seen so much, that there was a thorn in his flesh. There's a thorn in his flesh, and he prayed three times to make it go away. And the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my, in, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, does that mean that we're supposed to just take these things? It means we pray and we let it go, right? right. We pray and we let it go. We believe and we let it go. Right. It's my husband and our, it's our theme this year. Let it go. Yeah. Let it go. Prayed three times. The Lord will speak to you, right? The Lord will speak to you. Don't, don't buy it. Lord, what do I do? The Lord will speak to us. Yeah. We pray, we believe, and we will receive yeah. an answer. Yeah. <clears throat> no, what, no matter what that answer might be. So, we go through lots of things in this life. Not all of them are beautiful. Not all of them are anything but just painful and horrible. But God will redeem it. Yes. God will resurrect it. Someone said it this morning. Everything we go through, God will use it. For good. So I want to end this morning, <clears throat> I'm five minutes over, <laughs> with Romans chapter 8, which is this exact section. Romans 8, 26 through 39. I'm going to read the whole section because it's good and we need to hear it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession yes. for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, who he did predestinate, those of you who did no, before he called you and whom he called then he also justified yes. and whom he justified he also glorified yes. we have already been glorified yes. what shall we say to these things if God be for right. us who can be against us right. so when sickness and disease come no mm -hmm. no <coughs> what do we say to these things right. <clears throat> we're speaking to the mountains <clears throat> He that, spread, he, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give to us all things? <clears throat> Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Yes. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also, also maketh intercession for us. And remember, the right hand is the righteous right hand, right. the all-powerful right hand, the position of authority and power. 
Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Right. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, yes. for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. In all these things we are more than conquerors yes. through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, Satan, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on. Yeah. Be Jesus. Yes. Let's just, it is written. Right. Get thee behind me. Right. It is written. Get thee behind me. Right. Speak into the mountain and moving on. Yes. Uh -huh. Speak into the mountain and moving on. Yes. Because there is nothing. Right. We are not killed all day long. And we are not the sheep of the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Yes. yes. We have got to remember who we are. And we are the righteous. Yes, we are the redeemed. Jesus. We are the resurrected. We yes. have nothing to fear. Amen. So let's just go and just listen for the sound of his amazing grace. Yes. And when the mountains show up, we speak to them and we move on. We yes. the dust off our feet and we keep praising him because he is worthy. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Yes.